The Downtown Rams Podcast is brought to you by Rams on Demand, Seat Giant, Vibe 305, and RWO, Rams World Order. Now enjoy the show. And down the middle, to the end zone, caught by Brandon Cooks. Shoot your arrows. He picks Mikel Roby Coleman. End zone, caught, touchdown, Tyler Higby. Cooper Cup walks it out of the air and gives the Rams the lead. LaMarcus Joyner returns to the lineup with an interception in London. 35-30, Robert Wood, first down 20, 10-5, touchdown, L.A. No, it's Goff who keeps it, and oh, Goff oh, goes crashing into the end zone. Aaron Donald almost beat the football there and comes away with his third sack of the afternoon. That immediately in sack. Corey Littleton, have yourself a day. And he gets gobbled up. Savage has to eat it as Michael Brockers picks up the sack. He's decked by Ebukov. Picked off. Marcus Peters. Strutting his stuff. Mark Barron the last four weeks has been a pro bowler. He picked off Dak Prescott. Into the out territory. Into the clear. 30, 20, Farrell Cooper 10. Farrell Cooper at the goal line. Cousins. Sacked. In Dominican Sioux. Of all the guys, it's the rookie John Franklin Myers who knocks it out of Cousins' right hand. Todd Gurley, 20, 10, Gurley for MVP, touchdown LA! Welcome back, guys, to another Downtown Rams podcast. It's episode 159. We've been rolling, and we're not going to stop anytime soon. Uh, please welcome Alexis Kraft and our special guest, AJ Schulte. You can find him at, at AJ Draft Scout on Twitter. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and thank you both so much for joining me. Uh, really excited to do this live NFL mock draft. We're doing round one tonight, and then tomorrow, same exact time, we're doing round two. So I'm really excited, and I know you guys probably are as well. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's get this going. Yeah. I'm happy to be here, guys. Let's do this. Absolutely, man. I, it's you know it's gonna be a lot of fun. And um, if you guys want to tweet us, we have obviously we have our link, um, you know, on Twitter. If you want to just keep tweeting below that, reply to that, and just let us know your thoughts on your pick. If you want to hashtag DTR Live, that'd be great. And uh, we'll get this thing going. So right now, I guess AJ's on the clock. And that means the Arizona Cardinals are on the clock. So we'll give him a, a few minutes and, you know, he'll make his pick. can only imagine. <laughs> oh, this is, this is a real tough choice for me here. I'm going to go with the guy that I think is, is the best player in this draft. He's one of the best guys I've scouted. I'm going to go Nick Boza, Edge from Ohio State. He's with number one pick. I think this is the most likely scenario for the Cardinals anyways. I don't buy the Kyler Murray talk. So I'm going with a pass rusher because you can't have too many of those. Yeah, I agree. I think um, if the Cardinals don't end up taking Nick Boza, I'm going to be really concerned. Um, I mean, he's definitely, uh, I think, by far the number one overall guy. Nick Bosa, Chandler Jones. What are you doing to us, AJ? <laughs> Rams are going <laughs> to... Oh, oh. oh, poor Goff. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's a great pick by you. And uh, yeah, I'm now on the clock. So <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Um, the 49ers are on the clock. And I guess we're just going to keep you know, making this uh, this NFC West even more dominant. Um, Quentin Williams, come on down. Defensive lineman, Alabama. Uh, this is my number one player um, in the draft. I think he is phenomenal, just so disruptive at Alabama, of course. And, you know, I think w- seeing what Aaron Donald has done, I think teams, it's a copycat league, and I think teams are going to start, you know, really gravitating towards the interior pass rush. And so Quentin Williams, uh, San Francisco 49ers, him next to, uh, you know, obviously DeForest Buckner. That sounds terrifying in itself. And, uh, you know, I think with Earl Mitchell heading to free agency, I think it definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that's a good pick for the 49ers. That would, I would absolutely be terrified, especially (laughs) if I was like Russell Wilson sitting there with that offensive line. Uh Uh-uh. 
Oh, but they're just going to run the ball anyway, so never mind. <laughs> All right, so um, that means, uh, Alexis, you're up. You're picking for the New York Jets at number three. Um, all right. Um, with the third overall pick, the New York Jets select Josh Allen, edge out of Kentucky. Um, the Jets are a team that can really, I think, <laughs> upgrade at any position at this point. Um, and I think Josh Allen's the best guy on the board right now and is an absolute beast and someone who I don't think the Jets are going to pass up on uh, at that number three spot. No, I I agree. The, the, this Jets roster, you could make a case, is one of the worst in the NFL. And taking a guy as talented as Josh Allen, uh, especially going into the future, I think I think that's a really solid pick. Either either position you play him, if you play him at edge, you play him at full at off ball linebacker. I think either way he fits, and it'll be a good pick for for the Jets for years to come. Yeah, I, I like the pick. Um... You know, he's not my, my top edge guy, but I think it definitely, you know, makes sense for the Jets. And, you know, they continue to build that defense. And there's a new guy in town now that, you know, Todd Bowles is out. So I would imagine there's going to be new defensive players on that side of the ball. Mm-hmm. So moving on, we have the Oakland Raiders uh, picking it fourth. And that is going to be picked by AJ. Um, so, again, I'll give you some uh... time, but <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> well... My the thing about mock drafts is I try and emulate a lot of general managers, and I don't know how much say Mike Mayock is going to have, but if it's Mike Mayock or if it's John Gruden making the picks, this guy is just screaming out at me. It's Devin White. I, I look at this team, and their linebacking core is just some is just awful. I mean, Mark Lee, Jason Cabinda to to hear Whitehead, I'm kind of going, uh, that needs an upgrade. And Devin White, I'm not a super, like, duper awesome fan of his, but I think John Gruden is going to fall in love with his potential and athleticism. I think that that pick makes a ton of sense for what Gruden likes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can I can see Mayock being, because, yeah, like, like, I don't think Devin White's a guy. I mean, I think he's a top 10 pick. Um, I wouldn't really see him going at four, but now that you've said kind of that whole Mayock Gruden uh, pair, I think it makes sense that he's a guy that they would go after there. Yeah, I think Devin White has a chance to be really special and um, very athletic linebacker. It seems like somebody Mayock would really rave about. So, you know, I, I like the pick for sure. Um, I mean, he's my number one linebacker at this moment in time, so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If you're going best linebacker available, then I think you nailed the pick. So that will go on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who is they're also being picked by AJ. I'm going to – the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, no matter uh, the changes that Bruce Arians is bringing to the game, they need to protect – Jameis Winston and start running the ball a little better because last year was a little disappointing. Ronald Jones didn't kind of perform up to standards, um, but the whole the whole offense as a whole seemed kind of meh. Like it wasn't really uh, it it still put up numbers, but it never really felt inspiring. I want to take a guy who I really like and I think he brings a little versatility to the offensive line of the Bucks here. I want to go Jonah Williams out of Alabama. Because I think he can either replace Donovan Smith or you can play him inside at guard. Either way, I think he's an upgrade um, at their talent levels. And I I, I love the pick. I think he's going to be an all-pro at some point in his career. Yeah, I love Jonah um, a lot. And I think it makes perfect sense for him to uh, be taken by Tampa Bay and get on that line to protect the quarterback. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, Donovan Smith heading to free agency. I do think that Jonah um, fits that. And, you know, Bruce Arians is not giving up on Jameis Winston. So I definitely see, you know, why you would go out and get your blindside protector for him. And that leaves the New York Giants at number six. 
And this is an easy one for me. Uh, maybe it shouldn't be. I know there are people mocking the Giants' different positions, but I'm going quarterback here. I'm going to take Dwayne Haskins, quarterback, Ohio State. Um, he's my number one quarterback on this board. And, you know, I think he is a um, short to intermediate game uh, type of player. Um, I know from personal experience, you know, being a Rams fan at all, watching Pat Shermer, the way he operated uh, Sam Bradford under his rookie season. I think if they really wanted to, they could start Dwayne Haskins right away. Um, I think he's got everything that you need. You know, obviously Saquon Barkley, you have Odell Beckham Jr., Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram. You have all those guys. The offensive line needs to be repaired, and I think this draft, um, you know, they can certainly do that. But I think when you look at Haskins, he's, uh, you know, he's a bigger filled out guy. He's not, you know, the mobile guy that uh, someone on the air, you know, wanted to come out and say. But um, I think he's got a, a big arm. I think he's got a lot of room to grow. But, you know, right now his floor, I would say, is probably mid, um, I, I'd say, top 20 or like 20 to 32 um nfl quarterback i think he could come in and have that type of impact and you know once again sam bradford won rookie of the year but he was a dink and dunk guy so um that was pat Shermer. i think he can you know kind of carve out a plan to really help Dwayne haskins kind of transition the nfl yeah um i think this is the pick that everyone is expecting the giants to make. I'm not entirely sure that I am wanting them to take a quarterback here. Um, that's just me. I get a lot of heat for that, but, um, you know, I think if they are going to take a quarterback here, it's definitely going to be Haskins. He's kind of the safest, um, pick that people think out of that quarterback class, out of that first round group of guys who could go then. And, uh, I, yeah, I think it's definitely the pick that most people think is going to happen. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of with Alexis. I think I think Haskins is a great fit, uh, especially especially with Shermer, like you said. And it, it's not like they're lacking on talent on the offensive side of the football either. And that can only help. You, you, it's different throwing to Trent Sherfield versus Odell Beckham and Sterling Shepard. You know, I, I think it's a, I think it's a good pick if they go quarterback. I think it'll be Haskins the whole way, even even though. Kyler, I think, would be fun. I think Haskins is a much better fit overall. Yeah, I agree, and that's why I made the pick. <laughs> but uh, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars at 7, and they're on the clock, and uh, it is Alexis's turn. Well, since Haskins is off the board, I'm actually – I'm going to take – uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Ed Oliver, defensive tackle out of Houston. And this is, I'm making this pick because lately there's been a ton of talk about Nick Foles to Jacksonville. Um, that's what I think is going to happen. Or if it's not Nick Foles, I think they're going to bring in um, somebody else. So I'm going to go Ed Oliver. I think uh, he's a guy who can help their defense tremendously. And um, if, if he's still on the board at seven, I think that's who they're going to take. I would be absolutely terrified of playing the Jacksonville Jaguars if their defensive line they were throwing at me was Yannick Ngakwe, Ed Oliver, Calais Campbell, and Taven Bryan. I I would be as a quarterback. Uh, uh-uh. I think I think at this point he's best player available, and I I agree. If with the Foles situation, uh, it, nobody really knows what Jacksonville's doing, but the talk of Foles to Jacksonville makes a lot of sense. So I agree. I like the Ed Oliver pick here. Yeah, I think it's another one of those where it's kind of best player available. Um, You saw the Jets go with Leonard Williams uh, a few years back. The Rams obviously went with Aaron Donald and uh, the the 13th overall pick. Um, Sometimes I think you just have to take the best player available. You know, this league, guys are in and out of it. Guys get hurt, you know. So I think this makes a lot of sense for Jacksonville and to kind of have somebody – I mean, just think about, you know, Calais Campbell and, you know, again, like you said, um, you know, Yannick uh, in Galway. It's, uh, it's going to be pretty crazy then, you know, obviously having all those guys um, on that defense. And hopefully, you know, for them and any Jaguars fans that are listening, they have a, a better season than they did last year. Um, but moving on, uh, Detroit is on the clock. The Detroit Lions, eighth pick. Uh, they're going to be picked by Alexis. So 
you're up again. You know, Jake is going to be mad, but I'm Don't the Detroit. It. <laughs> the Detroit Lions take TJ Hawkinson, the tight yep, end out of Iowa. <laughs> you know, well, the Lions are a team that are in desperate need of a tight end. Um, and Hawkinson's obvi- a, a one-of-a-kind guy. Um, and I don't think that if, if he's there at eight, the Lions can afford to pass up on him. Um, I mean, he's going to help out that offense. They, they need more weapons. Um, Hawkinson's not only a guy who can – tight end and block but he's a receiver and i think the lions could really use him yeah i i, I like the pick because you look at when, when they traded away golden tate the offense had a bunch of vertical threats but nobody was really replacing golden tate's role and i think i think hawkinson can make a role there especially kind of as a, a bigger slot tight end uh and especially have a huge impact blocking for carry on Johnson who looked like he could be in the running for offensive rookie of the year before he got hurt. Um, I, I think Matthew Stafford would love to have a guy like that. And I think Matt Patricia might go, Hey, I want to have my own version of you know Gronk and over here. So I like it. I think it's a good fit. Yeah. So besides the fact that you broke my heart, um, <laughs> TJ Hawkinson is like my favorite prospect in this draft. And, you know, I was hoping he'd fall to 31, but apparently he's going top 10. And I will say this, uh, Detroit Lions fans don't love the number eight pick. They think of Eric Ebron and how that didn't work out. So you pick a tight end at eight. Um, I think he's a lot different. I think he is. Yeah. I, I don't want to say can't miss, uh, but I think he's right up there, you know, because even if he doesn't end up being, you know, the receiver um, that he's looked like. You, the blocking's not going to go away. He's going to be a factor, you know, on one of those sides of the football. Um, so, you know, I definitely think it's a it's a good pick, and you know, it'll really help Stafford out and help the vertical passing game out. But um, moving on, the Buffalo Bills are on the clock at number nine, and uh, that would be me. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to think about this a little bit. I know. There are some guys out there that would make a lot of sense. I think this Buffalo Bills roster is a little bit better than people are giving it credit for, and they are uh, two years away now from you know being in the playoffs. So <clears throat> I think I'm going to go with uh, DK Metcalf uh, from Ole Miss. I mean, number one receiver on my board, and you know he just they just said reportedly that um, you know DK Metcalf was gonna he was gonna run in the four fours and. His medical is going to come out fine, and then you see how ripped he is, which, you know, I, it does kind of concern me in a way, um, just because the lack of flexibility. But I definitely think this is a great pick. Buffalo needs to go out and get Josh Allen a legit number one receiver. I'm not really high on Zay Jones. I like, uh, you know, Isaiah McKenzie a little bit, but I don't think he's really a long term, you know, number one guy. And I really like Robert Foster over the top, but, you know, that's kind of like the deep threat, um, kind of the situational guy. So, you know, they have some pieces, but I think you go out and get DK Metcalf and, you know, it's kind of like having like an AJ Green out there, or at least you hope. So that's kind of where I lean there. Yeah, I think that's a great pick, uh, actually, for for Buffalo. Um, You know, since I took TJ Hawkinson, um, I guess DK is the best next guy for them and and he's a guy who i think is going to be a star so i i think it's a great pick can you can you imagine a 6'4 230 pound guy is is like a corner like if you're a 5 11 corner and this guy's running in the four fours and you're trying to play pe- press coverage on him uh-uh yeah no. i i would i think that would be an outstanding pick for Josh Allen, especially as he continues to grow, especially in his accuracy, Metcalf can be a huge bailout weapon for him early on. I, I think Metcalf is going to be ridiculous. I-, I I run out of words to talk about how good I think DK Metcalf is. Uh, I love the pick, especially you because now you give Josh Allen a reliable guy to pair with the Z receiver and Robert Foster. Yeah, I th- I love it. I I think he'll be an all pro at some point. Well, I appreciate that, AJ. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Pick number 10, uh, the Denver Broncos are on the clock, and um, that is Alexis picking for them. 
Um, let's, you know what? Okay. With the 10th overall pick, the Denver Broncos, like Drew Locke quarterback out of Missouri. Um, shocking. I know. Uh, but it's really, it's really not a secret that Elway is really excited about Drew Locke. And, uh, even though they traded for Joe Flacco, I think they're still going to take Locke here and let him sit out a year and learn behind Flacco. And, uh, I mean, it's just hard to imagine them not taking Drew Locke after, you know, how much Elway has shown interest in him. Yeah, and I think the benefit of Drew Locke is you can run run a lot of the same schemes with him as you could Flacco. A lot of play action, a lot of vertical throws, even though Flacco doesn't quite have the arm he used to. It's still the same general scheme for Drew Locke to get comfortable with going forward. And they've actually, they've got... Some not decent weapons on the outside, Cortland Sutton and Deshaun Hamilton. So I, I like it. I think I, I still think they're going Drew Locke. I agree with you there, even after Flacco. Yeah, I, I think it's a good fit. Um, I'm really not a huge fan of what they did with Flacco um, because now they really are going to be on the hook for Case Keenum, uh, whether they cut him or, or not. I mean, that's $10 million that they cut him, and now if they don't, they have a really expensive backup or – you know, Flacco mm-hmm. could be the really expensive backup. So I didn't really understand that move like at all. Um, but I haven't understood a lot of moves that always done. So that's no different. <laughs> um, with that pick though, I, you know, I saw Drew Locke in person at the senior bowl and I know everyone was raving about his interviews because I thought, you know, I watched him as well at the podium. He, I thought he carried himself very well. He looks very mature. There are some other quarterbacks that quite, you know, they're not that level yet uh, as far as maturity, I would say. Um, he's not shy and I think this is somebody that can, you know, lead a football team. He's another guy that really, I think could do the same thing as, uh, Haskins. I mean, I I know this, you know, quarterback class isn't really considered all that great, but you know, once again, I can see another quarterback that starts day one and I think Locke could, I mean, he's big enough to withstand the NFL punishment. And, you know, I think if you get him some weapons, maybe another guy to go along with, you know, a Cortland Sutton and a Deshaun Hamilton, um, then, you know, who knows? But, um, you know, I definitely like to see them grab a tight end for him because I think the key is here, tight end, security blanket for quarterbacks, young quarterbacks. You grab him in a nice tight end over the middle, uh, reliable. I think uh, Drew Locke will be fine at the next level. So with that being said, we have uh, pick 11, and it's the Cincinnati Bengals, and I'm on the clock. And, you know, I guess we'll just continue this quarterback trend. I'm going Kyler Murray quarterback out of Oklahoma. Look, you know, I get this is kind of shocking to people. I know he's too short and he'll never succeed. But, um, look, I think he does a great job of repositioning himself in the pocket, um, finding throwing lanes. Obviously, if he can't find throwing lanes, he gets outside the pocket. He's methodical. He moves very well, um, I think, off schedule, can make all the throws. And, this is somebody that I think can come in and start because I don't think, you know, are you really sure that Andy Dalton is ever going to lead you to anything more than maybe a playoff win, which they still haven't done. I I don't see it. So, you know, I think you add Kyler Murray in there. You add some excitement. You saw what a mobile young quarterback did in Cleveland with Baker Mayfield. I'm not saying he's the same, um, but you kind of, you have to change. I mean, you can't just be the same team that goes out to be seven and nine, eight and eight, nine and seven and be comfortable. Um, you know, they stepped out of their comfort zone with the hiring of Zach Taylor. I really like that move. And, um, you know, I think Zach Taylor goes out and gets his quarterback. And furthermore, I think it makes a lot of sense because Dalton, the, the Bengals wouldn't be on the hook for any dead money if they were to release him tomorrow. Um, you know, it's 16 million that they'd save and I think you could easily make that transition. Yeah, I think the pick makes a lot of sense, actually. Kyler is a guy who um, I feel like people either really love him or they really don't love him. And I think Cincinnati is an interesting fit because, like you said, they've got that situation with Andy Dalton. And uh, in my opinion, Andy is somebody who hasn't really done much um, in years uh, past and isn't a guy who... I foresee leading them to a Super Bowl at least anytime soon. So I think uh, Kyler fit there and a guy who, uh, like you said, Zach Taylor would absolutely love to have on his team. Yeah, I think I think that 
the wild card is kind of how Zach Taylor's going to run a lot of things. But I think Kyler Murray kind of negates. We know that Cincinnati's offensive line has kind of struggled recently, um, and I think he can help negate that with his mobility a little bit. But I really like the prospect of an of an offensive core of Kyler Murray, Joe Mixon, and A.J. Green. I really like that group, and I think you can do a lot with that group. That is – you're talking about explosiveness? Yeah, and especially with guys like Tyler Boyd and maybe John Ross might hit his potential. So you're giving Kyler Murray a lot of weapons. Yeah, I, I think Zach Taylor would have a lot of fun with that pick, and we we have no idea how Andy Dalton – is on any given Sunday. So I like the Kyler pick. Yeah. Um, I think you guys all kind of agree with me. So that was pretty cool. Um, I know it's a bold pick and I'm not saying that they'll definitely do it, but I think that's the pick they should make. Anyway, uh, pick number 12. Um, you are back on the clock, AJ, and you are picking for the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, this one, this one is kind of hit me on the head with a hammer. I knew as soon as as soon as you made your Kyler pick, who I was going to go with. I'm going Brian. I'm going Brian Burns, pass rusher, edge, whatever you want to call him from Florida State. Look, I think this guy, no matter his size concerns, is one of the bendiest dudes I've ever seen play the game of football. The guy looks like a pool noodle out there sometimes. <laughs> and so I really love the fit in Green Bay. He can be an outside linebacker, whatever you want to play him as, or and I think he's going to be a stud. I, You know, they've really struggled in the pass rush. Clay Matthews is leaving. They need an alpha guy there to replace him. Brian Burns is the dude. Yeah, I like this pick. I agree. I think they definitely need somebody in that edge rush uh, position. And uh, I think he's a guy that's going to step in and make an impact right away. Yeah, I really like this pick, and I, I think you you outdid yourself here. Um, for some reason, there was a, an article out there that the Rams should go after Clay Matthews, and I think that makes no sense because there's a reason why the Packers are probably going to move on from Clay Matthews. They have to get younger at that position. I think, you know, obviously I really like Nick Perry. I don't know how many other people like Nick Perry, but I, I do like him, and I think they're paying him decent money. Um, so he works. I like what Pettin is building there, and I like, first off, I got to give props uh, to Matt LaFleur for keeping Mike Pettin. I think this is the best mm-hmm. defensive um, coordinator that Aaron Rodgers could have had, you know, because I think the key is in his career, he hasn't had the defenses. And so when you look at this defense, I think it's building into something special. They got Jair Alexander last year tr- in a trade down, and then they get um, Josh Jackson. <clears throat> now you add you know, somebody at the caliber of Brian Burns, who, I mean, really his stock is all over the place. I mean, I think, you know, once he hits the combine, um, gets through all the workouts and everything, I think he'll be solidified in the top 15. But, you know, right now I don't know where he's going to go. And I think this is a good spot uh, for the Packers, for Brian Burns. Um, I like to pick a lot. But let's see, moving on, we have the Miami Dolphins uh, pick 13. And that is Alexis. She is back on the clock. All right. Well, I think everybody knew that that this was coming. But with the 13th overall pick, the Miami Dolphins select Rashawn Gary, edge rusher out of Michigan. Anybody who has listened to me on the show knows how much I love Rashawn Gary and how great I think he is. And I think uh, he's he would be a great fit for Miami and can help them improve tremendously either in the trenches or on the, the edge. And I think if he's here at 13, that that's who they're going to take. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little iffy about Rashawn Gary. Um, but I, I, I think it makes sense uh, in terms of you look at who's leaving in free agency. Cameron Wake and William Hayes are both likely to hit the market. And that they're probably going to look at cutting Robert Quinn because he's like thirteen million dollars in cap hit or something like that, um, or twelve million, excuse me. And I think they're going to try and replace that as much as possible. An athletic guy like Rashawn Gary makes sense uh, because I think he'll be uh, a nice pro- project going forward for the future. I'm not a hundred percent sold on him coming out, but in a few years, I think he could be good. 
Yeah, I think Rashawn Gary is somebody that, you know, he has a lot of potential and he didn't live up to, you know, the the billing, um, you know, coming out of high school. But, you know, you aren't decided in college. There are a lot of guys that obviously just look at Tom Brady. There are a lot of guys when they come in the NFL, they find their way. I do expect uh, Rashawn Gary um, to fill right in there. Um, Like you said, you know, Robert Quinn is up uh, to be a cap casualty Cameron wake free agent will Hayes you know definitely uncertain that T there and you know I'll say it I was wrong about Charles Harris I don't know if Charles Harris is ever going to be what I expected him to be and um I think they have to to make that move and Gary makes a lot of sense yeah uh, Charles Harris is actually a guy who I really liked as well um and I think that uh Gary is a guy who or anyone in that position to be honest but at at number 13, Gary is a guy who um, is going to make a lot of sense there. Yeah. I, I yeah. Agree I, there. I, I don't even, I don't even think uh, Charles Harris played hardly any significant snaps enough to make a yeah. really. Um, so I, I agree. I think Rashawn Gary will be fine. All right. Uh, pick 14. I'm back on the clock with the Atlanta Falcons. Um, I'm going to take Christian Wilkins because, quite frankly, I mean, I was considering Gary. You know, I think he is somebody that, you know, you would have to consider there, um, you know, for Dan Quinn. Just seems like that type of player that he would want. Um, I also Mm -hmm. would consider somebody like Draymond Jones if it was later on. Uh, But the Atlanta Falcons had kind of a weird year. And so we're picking uh, 14th here. And, um, you know, I pick Christian Wilkins, Clemson, defensive lineman. You know, I think – they're probably going to end up uh, – I would say they're probably going to end up letting Grady Jarrett go. Um, so they replace one Clemson guy with another. But, uh, you know, Grady Jarrett is a great player, but he's going to be asking for, from what they said, up to $20 million annually. And I just don't see, you know, any NFL world where that makes any sense whatsoever. So I'm not paying him that. Um, I'll move on and I'll take Christian Wilkins, a guy that I think can start right away. He can be a contributing factor to a defense. And, you know, they have some nice pieces there that are kind of, you know, waiting to be developed. I mean, obviously, you know, Tack McKinley, this is a team that I still think is pretty good. And, you know, last year they, they hit the injury bug early on in the, the opening day against uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, you talk about Keanu Neal going down and Deion Jones. So, you know, I think that they'll be back, and Christian Wilkins adds to that, kind of stops the bleeding before it really even starts um, by letting, you know, Jerry uh, Garrett uh, – now I forget his name <laughs> – Grady Jarrett. <laughs> uh, Grady Jarrett walk. So that's just kind of my take on that. Yeah, I agree. I like this pick here, especially with all the uncertainty at that defensive line position, and Wilkins is a guy who um, I think is going to – contribute right away and is going to be an absolute beast yeah I, I like the i like the clumsy connection you're going for here a little bit uh i agree paying paying grady jarrett 20 million dollars uh, i would do it i'm not sure if the falcons would especially because they have a lot of needs uh to fill and i noticed that they've started to cut guys to try and pay for all of it but if if they do let grady jarrett walk i agree i think Christian Wilkins will be a nice replacement pick here. Yeah. And then uh, pick number 15, we had the Washington Redskins, and that is the UAJ. You are back on the clock. I'm going with the very common theme here. I think I've picked uh, the same position for almost every guy. I'm going with another pass rusher here for Washington. And I, I have a buddy of mine, Matt, who might be a little ticked at me that I'm going here. Um, but with all the quarterbacks off the board, Preston Smith is hitting free agency. Cornell McPhee is also gone. And I, I just think adding the best player available here in Ja'Kai Polite, you can make a case he's the best pure pass rusher in this draft. I think he makes a lot of sense with his quickness. As, an, as a 3-4 outside linebacker there opposite Ryan Kerrigan, I think he's a stud. It, it just screaming to me. With, with Kyler Murray off, I'm I'm passing on a quarterback and I'm not really sold on any other wide receiver at this spot. So I'm going, I'm Ja'Kai Polite and I'm running away with it. Yeah. I like that pick and, and the reasoning behind that I agree with. And uh, 
another guy who I think is going to contribute right, right away and someone who the Redskins will definitely utilize and um, who will fit great with them. Yeah, I really like the pick. Um, he's one of my favorite edge guys, you know, in this class. And I love the speed off the edge. I love his bend. I love how he can convert speed to power. And, um, you know, with Washington, they're they're probably going to lose uh, Smith to free agency. So I think he can fit right in there and be, I mean, I probably would say his ceiling is 17 sack per game guy, uh, 17 sack a season guy. Like, I think he could get up to that level. I think he's going to end up being one of the best in the league. So a uh, great pick at, um, you know, number 15. And um, we'll move on to the 16th pick, the Carolina Panthers. And uh, that is me on the clock. So I'm going to take a, uh, hmm, I'm going to take a cornerback, kind of go along the LSU cornerback train there. Um, you know, they, they grab a LSU cornerback last year and you guys are going to help me out with this name. Cause I completely just forgot it. Um, but they're grabbing greedy Williams in this one and it, Dante Jackson, excuse me. That's who it was, but greedy Williams. Um, you know, I don't think he is the necessarily the, the, the best corner here. Um, but I think it's something the Panthers would do. I think they like the speed. I think they like the big playability. Um, and I think, you know, putting him next to, um, you know, somebody like Dante Jackson, and then you obviously have, um, Brad Berry. I think they're kind of developing something uh, special out there. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually shocked that greedy fell this far. Um, I'm not sure how that happened, but, uh, yeah, uh, uh, the Panthers are somebody who are in kind of dire need of secondary help. They have been since, Uh, Josh Norman left for Washington and um, I think the pick the corner position makes a lot of sense for them yeah I I think if you look at Greedy Williams he's got great ball skills super super huge for size I think it makes a lot of sense there and they kind of struggled they've been really they don't really have that kind of alpha guy since Josh Norman left so I, I like the fit here as well yeah, and then uh, moving on to pick seventeen, it looks like you're um, you're on the clock, Alexis, and it's the Cleveland Browns who are surprisingly picking at pick seventeen. <laughs> yeah, not something we've seen uh, in recent years. You know, I'm going to take um, Cody Ford, the offensive tackle out of Oklahoma. The only argument I need for this is look at what Baker does with bad protection. Imagine what he can do with better protection. Case closed. Interesting. Boom. <laughs> she nailed it. She nailed it. Cody Ford is one of my guys in this draft, and that's not just because I'm an Oklahoma fan. This guy is nasty and super athletic. I think he'll slide right on in at right tackle. Absolutely love the guy. He's going to be a stud. I mean, he's he's been this good just playing right tackle for one year. Imagine what he's going to do in the future. I'm all for it. Baker's going to love having one of his teammates back. Absolutely. Alexis killed this pick. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, I, I like Cody Ford a lot. Um, you know, I think he makes a lot of sense there. And, uh, you know, for the, the simple fact that, yeah, you're going to need to protect Baker Mayfield. Um, your left tackle last year is Greg Robinson. And, um, it you know, to me – I mean, Desmond Harrison was the opening day starter, and then you replaced him with Greg Robinson. So, I mean, that's kind of not good. Um, I don't really know how you could trot out your, you know, franchise quarterback out there when your left tackle is Greg Robinson. Um, definitely not something I would do. And you know, being uh, <laughs> being a Rams podcast, we know who Greg Robinson is fairly well. So I think Cody <laughs> Ford fits perfectly there. Um, you really can plug in any tackle and they're going to be better than what they had. So I'm uh, I'm a fan of this pick for sure. Um, but moving on, we have the 18th overall pick, and that is the Minnesota Vikings. AJ, you are back on the clock. Well, I think, I think we all kind of know that the Vikings kind of disappointed this year. After going to the playoffs last year, everybody was like, okay, look, they got Kirk Cousins. They finally got their quarterback. The defense is still back. They're ready to go. Well, they're picking at 18th. Didn't quite make it. I think their biggest focus should be offensive line, offensive line, and some more offensive line. 
because you got to protect Kirk Cousins because Cousins under pressure is kind of iffy, and you got to open up holes for Dalvin Cook. He cannot just be running right into the back of the guard every snap. And with that being said, I think the best guy here is NC State's Garrett Bradbury. He played center in college. I think he could play center or guard at the next level. I think you plug him in at center here. Pat Elfline played guard quite a bit in college. He could slide right on in. So that gives you a really good, young, interior core. And I, I, I love it. Brad, Bradbury's a stud, and I think he would thrive in Minnesota's zone scheme. Uh, yeah, I like that pick. I think the Vikings certainly need help on that offensive line, and, and Bradbury's a guy who can play, like you said, center or guard. And, um, yeah, I like the pick. Yeah, I think, you know, when you look at what they had, you know, last year, of course, I think any one of these guys can be replaced except for maybe Pat Elfline. That might be the only guy I wouldn't replace on this offensive line. But, I mean, you look at it, Nick Easton is a free agent. Um, you know, Mike Remmers, Brian O'Neill, who I really didn't even like in the draft. And uh, they got Riley Reef. And just to me, you know, the offensive line really got Cousins killed. They have to figure out something because they were a playoff team and they didn't make the playoffs. And they were a team that gave over $30 million a year to Kirk Cousins. They can't afford to treat him like that when they gave him all that money. Um, so I agree with yeah. you. I think, you know, Bradbury makes a lot of sense. Uh, once again, it's kind of you know the same thing with Cody Ford. You could have put anybody in there, and I think they would have been better um, than what they had. But you know that's kind of my take on the Vikings. Um, moving on, picking nineteenth, the Tennessee Titans. So they they just miss out on uh, the playoffs. They lose in the last game of the year to go to the playoffs. They lost to the Colts and uh, Alexis. You will be picking for them. So who are the Titans picking? Well, you know, I think I got to go with another tight end out of Iowa, Noah Fant. Um, I think he's a guy who is, you know, like Hawkins, and I think he can block. I think he can catch. And I think that you got to give Mariota more weapons. And I think that Fant's a guy that is a weapon and can really help out that Titans offense. Yeah, I, I liked it because you know, last year they lost to Lenny Walker. He got hurt. And after that, Jonu Smith never really carried the lead. I like him as a secondary tight end, but he Fent could be a mismatch weapon. I, I love his potential, his athletic ability. If you, you listen to some of the stuff they say at the Iowa locker room about him, He's going to test out of this world and combine that with some really nice hands. I think he'll be a stud for years to come. And I agree. Mariota needs as many weapons as you can get around him. For the constant offensive turnover in Tennessee, getting a guy that can be a weapon over the middle for Mariota is huge. Yeah, I like Noah Fan as well. Um, he's my third tight end behind uh, Hawkinson, and I had Dawson Knox at number two. But, you know, I, I think uh, Fant is definitely somebody that can be very similar to an Evan Ingram. Uh, so, you know, with the Titans, I actually like their tight end group. I don't know why Johnny Smith isn't used as much, um, the, the kid that they got at FIU. And I actually really like Harvard's, um, you know, Anthony Ferkser as well. Um, and then they're going to be getting uh, Delaney Walker back. So, you know, now you talk about having a whole – you know, bunch of tight ends out there that can really help Marcus Mariota and, um, you know, hopefully propel them back into the playoffs like they were two years ago. Uh, but moving on, we have the uh, 20th overall pick. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I'm on the clock. So I'm going to select uh, my number one um, cornerback here. You know, before I felt like the Panthers were going to uh, – they were going to take, you know, Greedy Williams. That's just somebody I see them, you know, taking – uh, but as far as, you know, who I believe is the best cornerback, it's Byron Murphy. Um, you talk about somebody that is going to be a lockdown guy at the next level. I think he's very similar to somebody like Chris Harris Jr. Um, you know, he can play, you know, inside as a slot corner. He can play, you know, on the outside. And obviously he's going to be playing on the outside because, you know, you have Mike Hilton there who they will have to re-sign. Um, and then you have Joe Hayda on the outside. But 
I'm sorry, Cody Sansabaugh, again, being a Rams podcast, not interested. Um, and then when you look at Artie Burns, that's not somebody that I even had, you know, a fourth round grade on, um, you know, when he was coming out. So I don't really like what they have there. Uh, Joe Hayden is really a placeholder. And so I think you need to add somebody like that. Um, Byron Murphy just makes too much sense to me. And the Steelers, absolutely, you know, keeping Keith Butler and everything, they absolutely have to, you know, have a plan. Because if not, Butler's going to get fired. And soon after, you know, Tomlin could get fired. So um, that's my pick there. Yeah, um, I love I love the pick, actually. And again, Murphy's another guy. I'm not sure how he dropped as far. Um, you know, in my opinion, he's a top 10 guy. And, you know, Lord knows the Steelers need secondary help. I, you know, it's just they haven't been able to find an answer. And I think that Murphy might be that answer. Yeah, I, I'm with Alexis. I love Byron Murphy. I love his potential. He's such he's so smart and he's got excellent mirror ability and coverage and I, I think with the lack of any really shut down corners that Pittsburgh has now you're giving them some pretty pretty decent options there with Joe Hayden now in Byron Murphy and Cody Sensabaugh and I I think that group can turn around with that kind of secondary yeah I definitely agree I thought it was just an absolute need and um, so that's where I went but Moving on, uh, 21st overall pick, we have the Seattle Seahawks, and uh, Alexis is picking for them. So I'm going to go cornerback as well. I'm going to have the Seahawks taking DeAndre Baker, the cornerback out of Georgia, Um, another team that's in need of dire uh, secondary help, and I think uh, Baker is the next uh, highest guy on the board available, and someone who's probably going to be a day one starter. Yeah, I think uh, he's got really good length and size, and he's, he just screams Seattle corner because they love guys like that. So mm-hmm. I, I'm on board with the pick. Yeah, I, I like the pick too. Um, yeah, I think he's a game-breaking talent. And somebody that once again we keep making the NFC West, you know, more dangerous. Um, so, you know, I think he'll fit right in there, and uh, I like the pick. I think he'll start right next to uh, to Shaq Griffin in this scenario. So it's a good pick for sure. Um, moving on, the Baltimore Ravens have the twenty second pick, and I'm on the clock. So you know, when I look at this, um, you know, the Ravens can go multiple different ways. I think you know they could definitely go and get. You know, Lamar Jackson, um, a big receiver. Um, you know, I think a lot of people will have Nikhil Harry here. You know, I, I tend to lean towards the running back position because while they got, you know, they got production out of Gus Edwards, Gus Edwards doesn't have game-breaking speed. Um, kind of lumbering back that I think really just is a is a power back that can work. Um, but you have an opportunity to go out and get my number one running back and you know, I think Josh Jacobs makes a lot of sense here. Some people will disagree, but, you know, I look at him. Uh, the speed's obviously there. He finishes runs. You can be a power back and be a speed back. Um, so, you know, I just look at it like that where, I mean, he may not be, you know, the best player on their board, but I could definitely see him doing that. Now that they have Greg Roman um, as offensive coordinator, I think it's going to be very, um, you know, important that they're able to run kind of the same, you know, the similar read option game that, you know, really helped Colin Kaepernick early on in his career and ultimately led the 49ers uh, to the Super Bowl. So, you know, I think that they start um, by, you know, grabbing a Josh Jacobs there and, uh, you know, him and Lamar Jackson. Now you give, uh, you know, Greg Roman a huge opportunity to kind of, you know, hit the home run. And uh, that's kind of where I'm going here. Yeah, I have Josh Jacobs as my highest rated back, too, and the guy who makes sense um, in Baltimore. You know, they haven't had really a superstar running back in a while, and I think that um, if Jacobs is there at at uh, 22, that they're really going to consider him, and I like it. I think it's a good scheme pick and um, someone who is definitely going to make an impact on that offense. 
Yeah, and I think I think another factor into this is that the Ravens lose a lot of running backs in free agency. Uh, Alex Collins, uh, Gus Edwards is technically slated to be a free agent, but he'll probably be back. But I agree, Joshua Jacobs and Lamar Jackson can be really deadly backfield, especially in the option game, because you have two very talented runners back there that you have – uh, yeah, that gives you f- total flexibility in the running game. You can throw a defense off, and Josh Jacobs is a pretty good pass catcher. So, yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, and um, we move on to pick number 23. Houston Texans are on the clock, and that is AJ. Yeah, I. we all saw how the Houston offensive line kind of fell apart against the Colts in the playoffs. So, again, I'm going with another offensive lineman. I'm going to go Jawan Taylor out of Florida. I think he could step right into that right tackle role and protect Deshaun Watson for years to come. They really need to just throw people at the offensive line at this point because they cannot roll out that same group of guys next season or else Deshaun Watson is just going to get bruised and battered. And we know how bad quarterbacks can get without – good offensive line in front of them I you just have to protect Deshaun yeah I absolutely agree I think it the only position that the Texans should be looking at at number 23 is uh offensive tackle and Juwan is a guy who is just a stud and is going to go in there and immediately I think make an impact and uh Deshaun is going to be thrilled to have a guy like that uh protecting him yeah, I think this is where I went in my mock. Um, anyway, it wouldn't have mattered because, once again, you're talking about whatever you get in this draft would be better than what they had. I, I like Julian Davenport. I was a really big fan of his coming out of Bucknell because I realized, look, this guy is absolutely raw. He is not going to be able to contribute right away. So what do the Houston Texans do? They draft him, and they're like, oh, yeah, contribute right away. So that didn't work out well. And, I mean, that's what happens because they traded Dwayne Brown away and kind of pushed him into that role. I just don't really get it. Um, I don't think he's ready. And he's somebody that I think eventually, you know, he'll grow and he'll become, I think, a pretty good right tackle. Um, But, you know, playing him at left is brutal. So I think, you know, you move – Jawan Taylor there you protect a guy that's already been injured in Deshaun Watson so that I mean that should really you know really add urgency to your you know mission to protect your franchise quarterback um so I really like this pick with that being said uh pick 24 Oakland Raiders are back on the clock and that means AJ is back on the clock man you know I have so much fun being John Gruden and trying to think of guys like that they really want a reliable target for Derek Carr. Because you look at that roster, the, the wide receiver position was just kind of meddling all season. Jordy Nelson was okay. A couple other guys were kind of – I mean, I had no idea Brandon LaFell was even on the Raiders team, uh, much less knew that he was catching any sort of passes. And I think with Derek Carr, you need to get him reliable catchers. And if I could think of one guy in this class that I think I could definitely say has the strongest hands that's available, it's A.J. Brown out of Ole Miss. Now, he's not my top-rated receiver at this pick, but I just think his reliability as a receiver doesn't have hardly any drops. When he gets when he gets his free release, he's great at the line of scrimmage. He can play slot, can play outside. I, I think he makes a lot of sense for their scheme, and I think – he gives Derek Carr a nice, reliable target for moving the chains or in the red zone with his size. I think it makes sense. Yeah, I really like that pick, actually. I think that the um, Raiders have to go receiver at some point in the first round. I mean, like you said, they they essentially have, since they traded Cooper away, nobody Um, in that receiving position. So they've got to pick a receiver. I think A.J. Brown, like you said, probably has the strongest hands in the draft. Um, Absolute beast and is someone who I think uh, Gruden and Mayock are just going to love and want on their team. Yeah, this is a little uh, little surprising, um, you know, because I I feel like Nikhil Harry could definitely be an option here. 
Um, but I think AJ Brown is a you know a fringe first round prospect. Uh, close, I, I'd probably say closer to early second. But I do get the pick. Um, you know, obviously, I think he's a good route runner, and I think he's got strong hands, and I really like him. Um, you know, I just when I look at this receiver group, there's not really anyone that jumps out to me. So this makes a lot of sense. But I will say. I do really like the kid that they got from Oklahoma State, um, you know, last year. Um, so, you know, I think that makes a lot of sense. And you add him, six foot five target. You add, you know, AJ Brown to that mix. Maybe you go out and get another receiver. And then I think you're starting to see a little bit that this is going to all come together. Because I don't know. I mean, do you guys really think that they're going to re-sign Jared Cook? Like, I mean, I personally wouldn't because it's just kind of like he's older. And he, you know, the resurgence I think is kind of you know, a contract year type of thing. So I think this yeah. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't think Jared cook comes back, especially, especially with his age too. What is he like? 33, almost 34, somewhere in there. And this tight end class. Yeah. I, I don't think he'll come back. So I, I think grabbing AJ Brown to be that reliable guy replaces him a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. So um, the pick 25th, uh, that is going to Philadelphia. So the Philadelphia Eagles are on the clock, and so is Alexis. So just looking at my board and looking at what the Eagles need, um, I'm going to go with Trayvon Mullen, the cornerback out of Clemson. Um, I think he's a very talented guy. I think the Eagles are a team that has been struggling in the secondary and they've got a lot of question marks, uh, in regards to free agency this year. And I think, um, if he's there at 25, um, the Eagles take him. Yeah, I I think he is a kind kind of a, a work in progress, but building towards the future pick. And I, I agree. I think they really kind of struggled until Avante Maddox came out in the end. You give Avante Maddox and Trayvon Mullen, that gives you a nice solid corner group going into the future. Yeah, I like this a lot. Um, I know there are people that like Jalen Mills. Uh, I personally don't think he's all that. And I do think, you know, when you have somebody like Ronald Darby, who they received from the Bills via trade, um, that's going to hit free agency soon. Like, you know, I think that you definitely have to go out and repair that cornerback position. I think that they have something in Cravon LeBlanc. I think he's an underrated player, um, but that's not enough. Trayvon Mullen makes a lot of sense. He's played in big time games. Uh, he's a bigger corner. And, you know, while we keep talking about the big three, you know, in, um, you know, obviously in Murphy and, uh, you know, DeAndre Baker and Greedy Williams, I think Trayvon Mullen is one of those guys that'll definitely, you know, test one of the three. Uh, to kind of jump into that top three um, out of the corners. So moving on, we have the Indianapolis Colts who are on the clock, and that would mean I'm on the clock. And I just got to say, what a job Chris Ballard has done. Um, you know, they have over $100 million in cap. They're a team that won a road playoff game against their rival. Uh, just really impressed, you know, with something like that. So, I really like Chris Ballard and, and he went out, you know, his mission was to basically protect Andrew Luck, something that Ryan Grigson failed to do. And he and silly came in and got guys to protect Andrew Luck. Um, Quentin Nelson is a game changer. So now there's not really a whole lot left. There's some stuff to, to do. Um, obviously they're, they're not a complete team, um, but they don't have dire needs. And so I'm going to go with a receiver here. I'm going to select uh, Nikhil Harry Arizona State I think this is somebody that when he gets out in the open field he's like a running back he's bulky he can break through tackles and he just becomes you know a terror um he's a big bodied receiver you know can go he can you know challenge uh you know the secondary over the top and you talk about T.Y. Hilton already being that deep threat for Andrew Luck but now you give Andrew Luck uh you know Nikhil Harry I mean he was throwing to, you know, guys, you know, from Old Dominion. And now you get him, Nikhil Harry, and I think it's game-changing because now you have him, you have Ebron, you have Hilton, and, I mean, they paid Ryan Grant for a year, I believe, so he'll be a free agent. So I think it makes a lot of sense uh, to go out and get the the best receiver available, arguably, and I think that's uh, Nikhil Harry. 
Yeah, I agree. I really like to pick. Um, I actually have Harry as my second um, receiver. Well, I have him kind of at the same tied with AJ Brown, but he's a guy who I really like. I think he's um, like you said, he's just a big bulky guy. Sometimes reminds you kind of of a running back. And I think it'd be scary to see luck throwing to Harry. I mean, it would just be um, crazy in my opinion. Yeah. You've got, you've got T Y Hilton, like you mentioned being that absolute field stretcher. Uh, I think Nikhil Harry is surprisingly quick. Not in the, the most fluid guy throughout his routes, but his cuts in the open field, you are right. He does look a lot like a running back after the catch. And you put that, what is he, is he 6'3", 6'4", somewhere in there, with length for days. Yeah, I think that's a nice contrast, Gives and it would give Andrew Luck just even more weapons to throw to. Yeah, and then, you know, moving on, we have the 27th overall pick. Um Wow, we're really you know running through these, but twenty um, seventh overall pick it's the Oakland Raiders, and that's AJ back on the clock. Well, well, you know, John Gruden complained about not having pass rushers, so I'm finally gonna give him. I'm gonna give him a pass rusher, Clayland Farrell, out of Clemson, super master technician, uh, and I think he is going to be pretty good at the next level, and I don't think he's He's not at that same level of Khalil Mack, but he helps uh, replace that loss in the pass rush because you look at what they had last year. They hardly put up any pass rush on anybody. I think they they were league fewest in pressures and hits and sacks, and I think Farrell can help boost that pass rush. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Farrell's actually a guy who I think – will go much sooner in, in the draft and um, is going to make an immediate impact out of that edge position and a guy who I think the Raiders really need, especially, you know, with Mac gone and um, they need a guy to become that uh, step up and become a leader on that line. And I think Farrell's the guy to do that. Yeah. I, I think, you know, Farrell's somebody that was mocked to the Rams last year and, you know, there was a lot of opportunity for him to come out, and he decided to stay. And, you know, he might actually go later on in the draft than he might have last year, but I don't really see why. I think maybe because just the defense in this draft is so deep. Uh, but I think Farrell is legit. And, you know, Oakland now, you talk about you know, losing Khalil Mack, you get the, the pass rusher. You know, Obviously, you can't have enough pass rushers in this league, and then they go and they trade away Khalil Mack. So, um, I think this, you know, makes a lot of sense. I think the Raiders are knocking out of the ballpark, or I mean, AJ is knocking out of the ballpark. So, you know, he's uh, he's done a nice job with uh, the Oakland Raiders. But it's hard, to, on, it's hard to mess up three first round picks, you know. <laughs> well, 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 <laughs> hold on there. <laughs> hey, hey, I said it was hard, not impossible. All right. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I mean, you could select like guys like Ted Ginn and. Uh, you know, Robert Gallery. <laughs> um, yeah, we won't go there. But uh, pick 29, Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, actually, sorry, I just completely jumped over the Los Angeles Chargers. I guess they don't get their pick. Um, 28th pick, Los Angeles Chargers. And I'm on the clock, so I almost skipped over myself. I don't even know how you do that. Um, I'm picking Mac Wilson because, you know, uh, linebacker of Alabama, uh, my number two linebacker, so you know it works out in that sense. Um, when I look at Wilson, I see somebody that is athletic, very athletic. Um, he's a great tackler. I think he's got some ability to to obviously uh, rush the passer. Um, look, I mean Denzel Perryman is going to be a free agent, and I don't see why you would bring him back. I think he is a marginal player. I think he flashes here and there, but I don't think he's a consistently dominant player. And I think Mac Wilson's probably the best, um, you know, player available on their board. Kyle Emanuel and Hayes Pollard are also free agents. So, you know, I look at this pick and I'm like, yeah, you know, the Chargers need to, you know, grab a linebacker and they also need to stop playing that seven defensive back defense and, you know, being really predictable when going up against a team like the New England Patriots. But, you know, we can't fix everything all in one draft. Mm hmm. Yeah, I like the pick. Max, a guy who I was kind of 
hoping would be available with that 31st pick with the Rams. Um, but I really like him. I'm a big um, Wilson fan. I've written about him for our site a lot. And um, I think he's uh, an incredible talent and has a lot of potential. And I think uh, he actually makes a lot of sense uh, fitting into that Chargers defense. Yeah, and, I mean, it's it's kind of like you said that how – uh, Perryman might be gone, and you know when they when you have to throw out seven defensive backs because you're not really sold on any of your linebackers. Maybe it's time to upgrade at linebacker, and I think Mac Wilson can do that. I think he's got the talent, he's got the range and coverage to do to to be out there on the field. So I'm all for it. I like the pick here, especially this late. Good value. Yeah, I I would agree. Um... But I mean, I made the pick, so I don't want to talk too much <laughs> about myself. Uh, pick number twenty-nine. Now uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are on the clock, and it's Alexis's turn. So, looking at at the needs that the Chiefs have, and looking at who's left on my board, I'm going to have to pick another corner. I'm going Julian Love, the cornerback out of Notre Dame. Um. Love is a guy who I, I watch play a lot because I'm an Irish fan and I, I've seen a lot of Notre Dame fans. And he's a guy who immediately, when he's gone, it impacted the entire defense. Notre Dame, Notre Dame is a team that went 12-0 and this season, and they played in that bowl game against Clemson, and Love got hurt. Um, I believe it was the first quarter that he went out. It might have been the second quarter, sometime in the first half. And immediately after he went out, I knew that the game was probably over. You know, that defense looked completely lost without him. Um, He's an anchor back there. It's tough to get anything by him. So I think that he's someone that the Chiefs um, could really utilize and someone who's going to go to the Chiefs and start right away and become a leader in that locker room and, um, you know, help out their defense. Because their defense is really, you know, they had an amazing offense, but their defense um, somewhat struggled this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, they just they need as many corners as they can get because starting Orlando Skandrick and Steven Nelson at this point, it, no. I mean, Kendall Fuller played good, but he should be like he was used in Washington, a full time nickel corner. And you can need as many outside bodies as you can get. So Julian Love here is probably the best corner here. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Julian Love is somebody that is going to see their stock rise. Um, I don't know where you guys expect Julian Love to run, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he ran the four threes. Um, you know, he's got game breaking talent, somebody that really just can change the game in an instant. And he was huge for Notre Dame. So, you know, I think Kansas City, you know, you have Steven Nelson and I'm not really a huge fan of Steven Nelson. Honestly, they let Marcus Peters go and I don't really think they replaced him. I mean, Kendall Fuller. Don't get me wrong, Kendall Fuller's a solid football player, and he's a better corner than most, but I, I don't know if they have a number one guy. I feel like Julian Love is that guy that isn't really being talked about enough in the first round, could fly up the radar, go in the first round, and probably right here. I think it makes a lot of sense, and it's a good pick. Um, but moving on, uh, pick number 30, Green Bay Packers are back on the clock um, with their trade uh, with the Saints last year, the Saints acquired Marcus Davenport, and the Packers acquired another first-round pick. Uh, so this will be picked by AJ. Yeah, well, I went pass rusher with pick 12. I'm going to stay on the defensive side, and I'm going to go safety. You know, they traded away Clinton Dix for a fourth-rounder, I believe. I think it's time to get his replacement. I'm going to go with the guy that I think isn't isn't like a super instant contributor back there, but I think he has the traits to move forward. I'm going with Nasir Adderley out of Delaware. And I really like the fit. He's got the range. He's got good ball skills. He can play in their coverage. He's a great tackler. And I think they finally need that guy back there at safety because Clinton Dix never really panned out. And I don't think they'll go Deontay Thompson because, you know, with the whole Alabama vibe with Clinton Dix, I like the Adderley fit. Yeah, I love that pick, actually. I, Adderley's a guy who, again, I don't foresee dropping to 30, but um, I think he would be such a pickup for Green Bay, and 
such a pick me up for that defense, uh, you know, and I think, yeah, I mean, I just, I like the pick. I, good job. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you know, he's my number one safety in the class and I don't know how he fell this far down the board. Uh, probably could be a top 15 guy, but I always say this, you know, if Adderley was six two, two twenty, 220, he might go number one overall. I mean, I don't see really many holes in his game if there are any. Um, you know, I get the the size concern, but all that means is just he can't be as versatile. He can't play, you know, the strong safety position. I think he's really just going to be a free safety, um, and that's fine. I don't think he's as versatile as Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, but I feel like he is – absolutely you know just from speaking with him you're going to get a high character guy you're going to get a leader um somebody that can make plays to win a game which i mean he did in, at the senior bowl um i just i have such a hard time pinpointing any weaknesses to his game i mean maybe it's just me <laughs> but i mean i i don't know i just think adderley is i'm not saying he's a perfect prospect but i might put him number one safety last year so i mean that's kind of where I feel, and, you know, I think this is a, yeah. a great pick. Yeah. I, I like Adderley. That, I mean, that's why I picked him, but I agree. I think he's a stud. And like he said, if he were just a couple inches taller, we'd be talking about him going a lot higher than a 30. Yeah. Um, so that means this is the pick that every, uh, Ram centric podcast fan has been waiting for. We have the Los Angeles Rams, uh, on the clock, and it's Alexis doing the honors. Who are they picking? No pressure. Uh, <laughs> nope, none at all. So I, I had wanted to take Mac Wilson. I, I thought maybe he would be there, but he's not because Jake took him um, for the L.A. Rival. Chargers. <laughs> Fight for L.A. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take Montez Sweat, the edge rusher out of Mississippi State. Now, I know that, that we want Dante Fowler to come back. Um, but we aren't sure if that's going to happen yet. And I think Sweat is a guy that you can absolutely not pass up at 31. I mean, he's an absolute – physically, he's a he's an absolute beast. Um, he's scary. I think it would be scary to have him coming off that edge um, rush and then have, you know – Donald and Brockers and whoever else is in there and someone who um, say that they, you know, with the whole thing with Fowler is if you don't want to pay Fowler, you know, all that money, I think sweats a guy who's going to step in and contribute right away. And I think if he's there at 31, that's who I want the Rams to take. Yeah. I mean, the reports came out the other day that the jets were going to offer just a stupid amount of money at Dante Fowler. And you know, I I would not pay him that much money. I'd say let him go to let him go to New York. Let them pay him the money. Um, and Montez Sweat would be a nice nice replacement. I think he's super long, like you said. His first step is great, super quick off the line, and I, I think he would slide right on in and replace him well. Yeah, I, I like the pick. Uh, Montez Sweat probably shouldn't have fallen this far either, but then again, you could say that about a lot of players, and then you end up with more than 32, so that's why guys fall. But, um, yeah. you know, I, I think this is a good pick. Uh, you know, I think the Rams, while they, they may not need edge as much as other positions, I definitely would have considered uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson here. Um, and, and they are definitely probably kicking themselves, you know, in the, the war room if Nasir Adderley goes to 30. I mean, they'd probably trade up if that were the case. Um, but you know, I think Montez sweat makes sense. And I think really what you have to look at, you know, with somebody like Fowler, do they tag Fowler and do they still get an edge guy? Cause I mean, that's kind of where, you know, I lean here is, you know, I, cause I don't know if they want Fowler to go. I mean, he's only 25 years old and I think he's got a lot of, uh, you know, untapped potential. I don't think he was coached up very well in Jacksonville and, you know, I think he's in a good spot. I don't know if he's going to want to leave. I could even see him turning down more money to stay in the fit. And, you know, obviously having that taste of the Super Bowl, you know, this year, you know, seeing what the Jets did. I don't know if you want to leave that team for the Jets. I mean, I'm not saying the yeah. Jets will be, you know, I'm not saying the Jets will be bad. Um, but I, I don't think the Jets can instantly overcome New England, win the division and then go to the Super Bowl. Uh, like the Rams did with Seattle. So 
you know, that's kind of where I stand here. But, you know, with Montez Sweat, I think he's a very talented pass rusher. In my way too early mock draft, right after last year's draft, I am going to the Rams. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, this is a good pick. And, you know, they have other guys with Okoronkwo and, you know, Trayvon Young. And, you know, I'm not really the biggest Ibukam fan. I do think he'd probably benefit more with a kick inside. So if you bring back Fowler and you draft Montez Sweat, I would entertain, um, you know, moving Samson Ibukam next to Corey Littleton, you know, at inside backer. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you guys like it because I I love it. <laughs> and, well, uh, we weren't, we weren't going to pitch. We weren't going to pitchfork and torch you out there. Just <laughs> that's what Twitter's it up for. One, we? That's yeah. what Twitter's <laughs> for, right? <laughs> All right. So I can't believe it, but we've we've gotten to the end of this thing, at least for the first round. Uh, once again, you know, if you stuck with us from the beginning, or if you joined a pick ago. Uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Pacific time, live. We'll be doing round two. But, AJ, finish this off with the Super Bowl champion New England Patriots. Oh, that hurts to, that hurts to hear, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, well, you know, I've gotten used to it, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, New England likes to do things a little, a little different every draft. Um, I don't think a lot of people had them taking – Isaiah Wynn or Sony Michelle last season. And so I kind of wanted to follow that unconventional mold. And I went with a guy that I think upgrades what they have currently. He's not necessarily a need per se, but I do believe he's an upgrade. I'm going to go with Dalton Reisner, right? The offensive lineman from Kansas state. I love Dalton Reisner. Like, he is such a gritty dude that I just I can't help falling in love with his tape every time I watch a game of his. I think his technique and his power is going to appeal to the Patriots. He can slide right on in at right tackle and give them an elite offensive line, dare I say best in the NFL if this happens. Oh, I agree. I think <laughs> if they get if they get Risner, it's all over uh for that line being the best. Um I love Risner. Um I think he's a guy who I honestly debated taking at that thirty one um pick with the Rams because uh we don't know, you know, the deal with Whitworth yet. But uh I like him. I think that he's a exactly who the Patriots would want at that spot and uh, I could very well see that happening. Well, the Patriots like versatility, and I really like this pick for them because I think they get really, you know, a versatile player that can play four out of five offensive line positions. And I wouldn't even rule out the way Reisner is. I, I, I wouldn't even rule out that he could play out center if they needed him to. But, you know, the fact is, you know, Dante Skarnecchia has really transformed this offensive line into something special. Uh, Trent Brown is a free agent. So, you know, I think that you definitely have to, uh, you know, keep that in mind. Um, Isaiah Wynn is coming off a serious injury. So, you know, I mean, I love the guy. I met with him, you know, rooting for him. Great guy. But who knows if he's ever going to be the same coming off that gruesome injury. So, you know, I, I definitely like this pick. And I think, uh, you know, unfortunately <laughs> for Rams fans, uh, the Patriots get a lot better just off this uh, first round pick. But that, that means AJ did his job. So good job, AJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I and I think you know with Reisner's with Reisner's issue at with his footwork, Scarnetti is going to look at him and go, okay, well he's going to sprinkle some fairy dust and boom, they've got another All Pro on that line. So, <laughs> I and I I think he's really going to appeal to Belichick and I, I just I love Reisner. I can't talk enough about him, so I'm going to shut up now before I get too far off. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know you you have your draft crush. We have our draft crushes. You know, maybe uh, Reisner's somebody that will end up on the, the podcast sooner than later. Um, but I think that's going to do it. Anybody have, uh, you know, parting thoughts? Um, I thought that we actually did a pretty good job. And, yeah. you know, I think it's crazy just seeing that some of the guys that fell are guys who I don't think will fall. I'm not sure how they did. You know, guys like um, – Byron Murphy or um, Rashawn Gary or, you know, just got, you know, even Harry, I don't think is going to go all the way to 26. So um, who knows? But I mean, I think overall, I mean, we, we were spot on and in, in our position um, needs for each team. 
Yeah, I, I think we all did a pretty a pretty good job, and I think we did it fairly quickly as well, um, which is nice. And I think we all did a really good job with the explanations and kind of nailing the picks. And I want to say thank you guys again for having me on as your guest. This was a lot of fun to do. Absolutely, man. Uh, it was It's awesome to have you on, AJ. Um, I thought you did a great job, and uh, I'm really excited for tomorrow. Like, can we, like, fast forward the clock? Can we use the, the Madden simulator? <laughs> like, you know, when you, you simulate a week or whatever, and <laughs> it's like yeah. you just – like let's just uh, have like an average day at work. Let's simulate that, and then let's go right to <laughs> eight p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, and we'll uh, we'll do this thing again. But but no, for real, uh, I thought you did a great job. It's it's been a lot of fun having you, and um, I'm excited for tomorrow. Me too. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. I ho- hopefully this one. Hopefully we can uh, have some fun tomorrow as well. I think we did a. Pretty good job with all of these, and the second round is always a lot more fun, I think, because there's more intrigue, because we kind of know the first round guys, but second round is kind of like the the long shots, and so I'm excited for it. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree. Too. Yeah, so... Um, see if I can steal more picks from Jake, no. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a feeling Jake went uh, Mac Wilson just because you took Hawkinson. How did you I know? He was... <laughs> I was I did I felt that way too and I knew when I was taking Hawkinson that there would probably be repercussions of that but like I just couldn't help it I mean it made sense I mean he's just an amazing player I, I don't blame you I just was I was like reading uh I had your mock draft up and I was like oh okay so you'll probably pick uh <laughs> and then I got you back for it so yeah. we busted yeah. each other here and there so it made sense but well uh, it'll just happen more tomorrow i'm ready let's go all right bring it on so um <laughs> looks like we're, we're ready to start round two but we have to wait so um thank you guys so much for tuning in this has been episode 159 of the downtown rams podcast it was a dtr live mock draft of the entire first round so um, if you didn't hear the beginning of it, don't worry. It's going to post soon as an actual podcast to wherever you get your podcasts, iTunes, Spreaker, uh, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, whatever. Um, you can find it there. Uh, but it's been a lot of fun, and you definitely should uh, tune in tomorrow, Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time, for round two, where AJ picks for the Cardinals to uh, start us off at 33rd pick so thanks again guys uh take care and have a great night thanks guys